I was so broke. Yet here I am today, millionaire status, luxury car status. How did that happen? I want to say thank you to the people who bought training and thank you to the people who are about to buy training and shout out to the nerd tribe. I get a lot of pushback about my methodologies. I get a lot of pushback when I say, if you're the average American, you should start a business. And there was a comment. I think it's kind of strange that you think that the average American should start a business when the average American doesn't have a thousand dollars. And it got me to thinking, I used to be the average American. I used to go to pawn shops. I used to do title pawn. Long, long time ago, I would, I had a big CD collection and I had a big DVD collection and I would pack them all up, go to the pawn shop and pawn my collections because I didn't have any money for emergencies. If anything happened, if a car repair needed to be fixed, I didn't have the money. And at the time I didn't even have a credit. So I was the very person that I am talking to. Now, how did I get up to the point where I have $250,000 in my personal checking account? I don't show you that to flex. I don't even show you that to um, impress you. I show you that as proof positive that I am no longer the person I used to be. That's why I'm showing you that. This is my personal checking account. This is money that taxes have been paid on. This is the account I use to pay my bills. Interestingly enough, it's the end of the year and my checking account, my personal checking account still has $250,000 in it. It's the end of the year. This is the account I've paid my rent, my car insurance, now, there are some things I have learned, like my business pays for my health insurance. My business actually pays for my car insurance. So from a personal standpoint, actually my business pays for everything. Business pays for rent, everything. And this is very transformational for you. Why did someone who used to have to go to the pawn shop to pawn his CDs or more so, how did someone who used to go to the pawn shop who had to pawn their CDs get to the point where they've got 
$250,000 in their personal checking account. How did that happen? I used to be the worst case example of the typical American. Actually, I was actually a few steps below the typical American. No savings, didn't really understand credit, uh, didn't understand business. How did I go from that to where I'm at today, where I can go to the Porsche dealership and drop cash for a brand new Porsche? How did I go from the point where I don't even work all year long, I only work part of the year? In many ways, I am semi-retired. How did I go from that guy? I'm gonna tell you a story because this is a long, long time ago. It used to be if you've got a lot of overdrafts, the bank would shut your checking account down. I remember when the Visa debit card came out. If you did not have good credit, you could not get the Visa debit card. I didn't have good credit, so I just had a regular debit card. And my checking situation was a little funky. So I remember one day, I was off, but it was payday. And because my checking situation was funky, I was very hesitant to put a lot of money in my personal checking account. So I would get a paper check. And I remember I was heading to the hospital to get my check. I had a car that had a malfunctioning gas gauge. So I always had to keep it full and I always estimated how much gas I had. Well, this day, I estimated wrong. I estimated, so literally going up 75, I ran out of gas and had to pull on the side of the road. At the time, my infant daughter was with me. So we get out the car and we start walking. I put her on my shoulders to start walking. And this kind gentleman pulls over, takes us to the gas station, gives us some money. I get some money, I put gas in my car and I go get my check. I was so broke that I did not have money to fill up my gas tank. I was so broke that I did not have adequate checking protocols. I was so broke. Yet here I am today, millionaire status, luxury car status. If I wanted to take off today and take a vacation for a month. I could. So how did I go from that person who didn't have enough money for gas, who didn't have a checking account, who only had a regular debit card, did not have any credit cards? How did I go from that to, I now have a binder of credit cards and how did I go from that? And this is a response to the person who left that comment. Why do I expect people who don't have a thousand dollars for emergencies to be able to start a business? The simple answer is I did it. That's the simple answer. I did it. I had the worst financial habits. I had the worst financial background. When I was in the military and I got my first two credit cards, the Citibank credit card and the first union credit card, Literally, they were maxed out within three months. I had the worst financial habits. I had the worst financial practices. I was what would be called the working poor or the working middle class. And I went from all of that to where I'm at today. So the reason that I feel that people can make this transformational change is I did it. I didn't come from money. I didn't come from privilege. And I'm about to tell you how I did it. And for many, you know, I have this saying, you do not know what you don't know. And there was so many things that I had no clue about. And my transformation started in that boarding house. And the first step in personal transformation is getting to the point where you're being brutally honest with yourself. I did not realize for many years, I was lying to myself. I'm a good person. I deserve success. Many of you echo those sentiments. Hey, you're a good person. You deserve to be successful. Uh, it, it, it don't work that way. It does not work that way. First lesson that I had to learn, I was shaving in the bathroom. I was looking in the mirror and I was filled with contempt 
and discuss for myself. And I had a realization, and this is where the brutal honesty came into play. I was sitting there and I was about in that boarding house for about 15 months and a question popped in my head. How did you end up here? And an answer popped in my head. You didn't have no money. I, as much as I wanted to blame my dysfunctional ex-wife, there are plenty of people who got divorced. There were plenty of people who separated who did not end up homeless. So a divorce is not the reason to end up homeless. And I was like, you didn't have any money. And at that moment, I went out that, that very day, I went out and found me a part-time job. And every penny from that part-time job went into a savings account. I did not take this money and enhance my lifestyle. So two lessons emerged in that bathroom that day. Number one, the brutal, brutal honesty. And number two, I needed to develop the practice of keeping money, of saving money. That that was a huge lesson. And this was many, many years ago that I established that my first emergency fund, that was my first emergency fund in life. At the time, I was about 31 years old. It was the first, well, actually that's not true. When I was in the military, I used to buy a US savings bond for 50 bucks and I, it automatically came out my check. And that was actually my first savings account because that's the money I used to buy my first car. But it was not a intentional, it was rather passive because I checked the box, they took the money in my check, and they sent the savings bonds home to my mother. And that moment is when I begin my personal transformation, brutal honesty, and I started to establish better financial habits. Here's the thing, and I'm about to be a little rough on you guys. There are many of you who feel that you are better than you really are. How do I know? Raise my hand. I used to feel that I was better. I used to feel because I was a good person. I didn't commit crimes. Chris Rock had a skit. So you're doing all the right things. Whether you want a cookie, you want cookies and punch because you're doing what you should be doing. There are no rewards for you to do what you should be doing. But I felt that there should have been rewards for me being a good man, working multiple jobs, not cheating on my wife. I felt that I should have been rewarded for those things. I didn't understand, and this is the third lesson. The first lesson, brutal honesty. The second lesson, financial management. The third lesson, and this is deep. When I figured out a way to get the job at Rena Creighton, if, you're, if you don't know the story, I will tell you the story. I got laid off from T-Mobile, and I went home, and this was, a, this was a, a year first for me. The first time that I actually sat down, came up with a plan, I called it Scheme Incorporated. So I was aware enough to know that they would check my background, but they would not check the background of the reference. So I created my own reference, Mr. Patel. And back in the day, this was the day of beepers, not cell phones, I didn't have a cell phone. And there was this company on the Norcross that charged me $30 a month to do what Google Voice does for free today. And I went, out there, got my voicemail set up, and I worked on my Indian accent for weeks because I made that recording at the voicemail several times working on my Indian accent. So I went ahead and went to monster.com and every time I applied for a job, I crafted my resume to fit the job because I had a reference. I had a four year reference and I got the call from Renacrate. I went on not one, not two, but three interviews, got the job. And once again, clear understanding, I lied to get this job. I make no bones about it. I make no mistake. I straight up lied to get this job. And then when I got the job, which involved cold calling, something I didn't know how to do. Third lesson, you must go above and beyond normal standards for extra for the money. So what I did, I would go to work and you know, shortly, quickly, first week I realized I needed some help. So there was this periodical called Loom Panics and they had all these little books in there. And there was this one book with a red and black cover. 
I don't know that every time I tell the story, it's like, what's the name of the cold calling book? I have no clue. And I ordered that book and it taught me how to cold call. So literally I went from booking no appointments to booking three to four appointments per day. But how did I do that? I read the book, then I would go to work the next day and I would deploy the tactics that I learned in the book. And once again, brutal honesty, I knew that I sucked. I, I, I knew that I sucked. There was no, well, I'm good you know these people are no no I was brutally honest and then what I did is I also made a promise to myself that I would never ever get laid off again so I quit that job at rent a crate and went to another job rent a crate started me off at thirty eight thousand five hundred dollars adjusted for inflation that's like sixty thousand the next job I went to I was making sixty doing the same thing cold calling setting appointments and then I stayed there for a hot minute then I moved to my third job where it was 100% commission. And once again, first lesson, brutal honesty. So whenever I would approach someone to sell office furniture and I didn't get it, I would always go back to that person and say, hey, I want to request a favor from you. I would humble myself. And I was like, look, I understand I didn't get the, the, your business and I totally respect that. Please tell me what I did wrong. Game changer. People start telling me and going forward with new appointments, new prospective clients, I would not repeat those mistakes. So the feedback was incredible. So I went from making a lot of appointments because I was very good at setting the appointment and doing the presentation. But once again, brutal honesty. I sucked at sales. I completely and utterly sucked. So what did I do? I crammed my pipeline full. Literally, I would be, because this is what I used to do. Once again, third lesson, above and beyond. I knew from my cold calling experience that I could reach decision makers early in the morning. So guess when my workday began? 6 a.m., which means I got up at 5.30, brushed my teeth, did what I needed to do, and... I started cold calling at 6 a.m. to 8 p.m., often setting appointments for the same day. So volume, fourth lesson, if you want to make a lot of money, you need a lot of volume. So I was going on three to four appointments or about 20 appointments a week, 80 appointments a month. That's a lot of volume. And once I figured out, I knew how to set appointments, I knew how to do the presentation, I went and I talked to the people that I messed up on and got the feedback and corrected all those blind spots and deficiencies. Because see, I was presenting, but I didn't know what I was doing wrong until I asked. Because once again, you don't know what you don't know. So shortly after I got that third job, about six months in, I started to close sales left and right. I remember my first pure commission check it was for $68,000. $68,000 because uh, essentially uh, Marilyn, she would go around and put your check on your desk and I, I walk into work and there's a check on the desk with my name on it and $68,000. What did I do? I went straight to the bank. I cashed my check and I went straight to the BMW dealership and paid cash for my first brand new car. Thing is, I was uh, self-employed. I was a commission salesperson. So I didn't take it, I didn't set any money aside for taxes. So fortunately for me, the next few months, I generated the income to pay the taxes because once I learned the secrets, once I learned all of the mistakes I was making, I was literally closing one to three deals every month. You don't want, you want to know what my biggest commission check was? My biggest commission check was for a hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Two years before that day, I was living in a boarding house working minimum wage, garbage, crappy jobs, two years. So this is why I believe the average person can create a business and literally transform their lives. Now, part of that, number one, brutal honesty. Number two, financial management. Number three, going above and beyond what you should have to do. And then the same year that I got that $150,000 
commission check. I got the offer from JDA to sell their furniture and that put another 200K in my bank account. But at this point of my financial journey, I was very good with money management. Guess how much of that $200,000 I spent? Zero. So that year became my foundational funding year. I did not use credit. I did not use loans. I did not use credit cards to start any of my businesses because I always, when I came to YouTube, guess how much money I had in the bank? $300,000. Ever since I started to save money, not invest money, but save money, I've always had the money to start a business, to launch a new initiative organically, organically. So this is like, once again, I was broke. I was poor, I had bad credit. And I went from all of that to literally having a binder of credit cards. My credit score at the moment is like 830. You know what the lowest credit limit on my personal credit card is? $40,000. My business credit cards are much higher. And I used to be the broke average American. Part of the journey is, this is where brutal honesty, that first lesson is so important. When you're brutally honest, you receive and look at information correctly. This is one of the things that helped me with my dating life. I became brutally honest. I'm not the most handsome dirt dude in the world, but my game is immaculate. Y'all have seen my girlfriend walking the by. She ain't fat. She's actually quite little. I have been able to get sexy, attractive women because I have been honest with myself. I don't get women on my looks. I get women with my game. I don't use money. I use game because when I was in that boarding house, I was dating a doctor. I learned many, many lessons in that boarding house. So for all of you people who have not gone through the transformational, transformational journey that I have, you don't know what you're talking about because I strongly believe, I know for a fact that if you are exposed to the right information, Lesson number five, number one, brutal honesty. Number two, financial management. Number three, above and beyond. Number four, correcting deficiencies. Number five, having the right information. This is why I'm always talking about, what up hustlers? All these bullshit YouTubers who are literally blowing smoke up your ass. You cannot do this in a few weeks. You cannot do this in a few months, but you can become a millionaire in three years. How do I know? I did it. When I was in the storage auction business, I wasn't a millionaire. I was in that business almost 10 years. Then I came to YouTube and I got into the educational space and became a millionaire in two and a half years. I used to be broke. I used to have bad credit. I got, here, here's personal credit, money management. There's not a balance on any of these credit cards in my credit card binder. Not a balance. Money management. So this is why I understand what you need to do as an average American who wants to transform their financial life. I can tell you what you need to do. I can set you up. But number one, you gotta be brutally honest. It ain't them, it's you. So I'm getting ready to put out some new training and I'm gonna start this in January, so be aware of this. And I haven't decided how I'm gonna go forward with it, but I'm going to put it out. So be on the lookout for that because you, with the right information, following those five steps I've outlined in this, build, this video, can get rich in these United States of America within three years. How do I know? I did it. I've shown you guys the proof I've shown you guys the receipts. Now you can sit in the peanut gallery and be in the hating ass little bitch and stay broke, stay the same, or you can open up your eyes, put in the work and get rich in the United States of America. I am Glendon Cameron, I have spoken.